Hello and welcome to Frank School, 6 year, 146 day, first video. Hydra says hi. A Hydra hi. Uh, a Hydra hi is the way that would be spelled in our talk spelling. Notice the assonance, a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, a Hydra hi. And in uh, uh, standard spelling, you don't even see a single U. That's odd. Uh, this cat is... For I was writing on a blackboard and he leaped and landed on my shoulder and then the second time leaped and landed on my back so I, I don't know what he'll do if I put him down uh, but I would like to use more than one hand uh, <coughs> I uh, this is an interruption I know and I had said that about Hydra Hydra is that collection of that tangle of nouns and terms that's in my head that I feel like I've successfully dealt with. Hydra is now my friend. But I, I had said that uh, I'd made the last video in the Hydra series, the Hydra playlist. Well, I'm making a liar out of myself. I'll add this one. There's all these terms. They keep showing up, but now I feel it, it's kind of reasonable. Uh, uh, and something related to the last video, it has nothing to do really with Hydra, is I, I was dealing with wood. I forgot to mention that I have I have about 7,000 of these given to me. Uh, they're, they're ground wire molding. When, when, when the ground wire comes down a light pole in the old days, well, old days, you covered it for safety's sake with this. This was molding. The copper wire, bare copper wire went down through there. And uh, the, it was at the pallet mill in town, and, and they sold out and uh, had an auction. And, uh, but but it, uh, it turned out that there was a, about 7,000 of these left stacked where they were tearing the building down. And, and uh, the guy tearing the building down could have taken them away, but he didn't have a good plan for them. He had a sawmill. He was going to use them to sticker his... To sticker his wood and I said boy that's a waste you could use regular old strips of wood for that and he knew that anyway he gave them to me it cost me $25 to have, have them trucked out here but anyway I've got about 7,000 of them wood <laughs> what to do with them uh, you know what I think I can do with them and I started to I can build models of buildings uh, this is hard with this cat but anyway stacked like that they, they look like they look like a log building, but more interesting than log buildings for me are timber frame buildings. And someday I'd think I'd like to maybe, maybe when I can't get around so well, but if my fingers and mind still work, I'll, I'll make models of, of some of the uh, vernacular architecture in, uh, in uh, Switzerland and Germany, the wooden stuff. Uh, all right, so, so much for that, so much for this, so much for assonance. Assonance is when you've got a repeating uh, vowel uh, in, in language as opposed to consonants which has a repeating uh, consonant. So it's a little bit like rhyme. Another thing I want to say before I get to that, you know, there's been this horrible, the latest horrible m massacre in, in a school uh, in Florida. And, uh, you know, and so now the, uh, currently, this is as of today, the proposal is there, let's get more guns in schools. Uh, uh, you know, arm the teachers. <laughs> you know, I don't know, in a way, I don't know why the Na National Rifle Association isn't okay with that because more guns, just think of how many more guns will be sold. Uh, gun culture, add to it. <laughs> we'll see where that goes. But anyway, I think of Joseph Tainter. Why I mention that is because Joseph Tainter uh, is a, do a doctor, he's a PhD. He argues that societies tend to get ever more complex until they finally collapse. Well, that's an example, I really think, of complexity. He used 9-11, I think, as an example, how, how the modern world had to become so much more complex because of that danger. Well, now complexity, an increase in complexity, w might make it possible for the current school system, education system, to continue. But there is the option, no one says anything about it, they, they, they don't even think about it, of decentralizing the schools. Don't bus all those children into one spot and, and make a prime target. Don't do it at all. Uh, homeschool, it not even uh, mentioned, I don't think, is a possibility. It's beyond the pale, I guess you would say. 
degrow, degrow education. I'll, maybe I'll eventually turn to that, but anyway, that's not really my point. I'm going to take a chance that this cat will leave the camera. All right, why Hydra has popped up is because, well, these guys' names, uh, I don't think I mentioned them before, and I was lax to not do so. Permaculture is a big thing. I never was very fond of the word, which is a problem for me. Uh, I'm, I don't think of myself really as a permaculturalist, but rather as a, a degrowther, and a uh, and or a degrower, <laughs> and a uh, a decentralist, certainly a decentralist. But these are very big, influential names, and they're worth looking at too. Uh, both in Australia, I think Samuel Anderson is also uh, from Australia. Uh, Australia itself, Tasmania, it it deserves recognition here. You know, I, I had found and have found and continued to feel that Europe is way ahead of the United States in the concept of degrowth and, sust and sustainability, I'll call it, but so much as sustainability is about how can we sustain this lifestyle and still have it, we can't. Uh, but anyway, uh, so these, they're really big and that word is too, and, and I, I, I owe it, and Hydra has pointed that out. Richard Heinberg, I, I, you know, I, I don't have all this sorted out yet, but I think I'm correct to associate him with simplicity.org. I, I, I have this, I'm going to research this stuff more, but I want to give you the terms. Uh, resilience.org, uh, dealing with the idea of, so how can a community be resilient to the changes that are certainly coming? Transition towns, I think I might have mentioned transition towns. Well, anyway, those are terms. They deserve to be on that, on that long list that Hydra uh, 